Blair Line, Fred and Red's Cafe. This will be my second Craftsman kit. I built the Bar Mills Bud Smiley's gas stop previously. Fred and Red's Cafe is a, is a small building. It's only two inches wide and four and a half inches deep. So a guy could fit this on his model railroad in a lot of places. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot of pieces to the kit. So given its size, I would expect it to go together pretty quickly. The instructions are really good. They were clear and easy to follow, and I didn't have any trouble putting the model together. Looking the parts over, a couple things I like about the kit already are it has a floor and it also has nail hole details in the exterior sides. I painted the main structure components with rattle can spray paint and I paint one side and let it dry for half hour 45 minutes then flip the parts over and paint the other side so both sides of the parts been painted to try to head off any warpage while the paint on the main structure parts was drying I painted some of the smaller pieces and here I painted the the door parts with red craft paint and I just squeezed a little red craft paint out onto a palette, took a brush and applied it straight from the tube. I used a dark gray acrylic paint and painted these window frames with an airbrush. Now that all the paint is dried, I have some of the parts gathered up where I can start putting a few things together. I attach the window glazing to the window frames using Formula 56 canopy glue. Uh, one nice thing is the Blair Line kit, the window glazing is all pre-cut so you don't have to cut your own. You just uh, have to cut a few of the tabs and then everything's cut to size. I have the windows installed and they fit perfectly. No trimming was required at all. I slid right in and I tacked them in with canopy glue. The gray door casing is peel and stick so once I removed the pieces from the sheet I just took off the adhesive backing and stuck them to the door openings. Next I installed the back door and I secured the door in place from the inside of the part with a few dabs of canopy glue. The inner and outer pieces of the door have adhesive backing so I just peeled the backing off the outer decorative part of the door and attached it to the inner part of the door. And the uh, window glazing was just tacked in place with canopy glue. The gray trim for the front door has an adhesive backing. So I stuck that in place and then I set the front door in place and uh, attached it using some canopy glue from the inside. Once the windows and doors were installed, I then uh, put the main structure together. And I used clamps to make sure it was all put together nice and tight, all good and square. Every night when I stopped working on the model, I would weigh it down and make sure it was held down flat. That way I could keep it from bowing or warping. I painted the red and white parts of the roof sign with the craft paint in a tube, and I used the paint just straight from the tube. 
And the gray parts of the frame was painted using uh, model paint in the small bottles. Here I get to a point where my inexperience with these craftsman structures starts to affect my quality. And you can see like the inside of the outline of the arrow is kind of ragged. And these parts are really fragile. So I got to find a way to secure parts like this where I can sand them smooth. I have the roof sign assembled and it's just about ready to install but not quite. The kit comes with three of these exterior lamps and I'm going to try to make one functional. I nipped off the molded in bulb from the bottom of the lamp shade and then I drilled a hole through the shade and threaded the wires for the micro LED through the hole. And before I went any farther and did a bunch of extra work for nothing, I checked the light, made sure it worked. I glued a small piece of wood square stock to the back of the sign, and then I attached the lamp to that piece of wood. After that, I proceeded to route the wires. Try to make it routed neatly down the back of the sign. I added two micro LEDs to the interior of the structure. And I just attached those to the walls with canopy glue. Since I had the big eat sign on the roof illuminated, I figured I should try to illuminate the open sign on the side of the building. I glued some aluminum foil to the solid piece of the open sign. I figured the aluminum foil would act as a reflector and spread the light more evenly. The kit came with two laser cut opens and each side of the sign was supposed to get one. I decided to remove the letters from one of the pieces and you can see the letters in the upper left hand corner and I used that piece without the letters as a spacer. I glued a micro LED to the inside of the remaining open. Here I have the three pieces assembled and the micro LED, the light faces the foil so it's shining towards the foil. I tested the sign and this is what I have. I may experiment with resistor values and adjust the intensity of the light. I probably won't experiment with that any further until the structure is permanently mounted and in place. I'm drilling a hole in the side of the structure. This is where I'll thread the wires for the open sign through and it's also where the sign will attach to the building. I have the open sign glued in place and I put a small square up against it Make sure it stays at a nice 90 degree angle to the side of the structure. Well, I scoured the internet, found a couple classic kitchen and restaurant interior photos that I thought would fit into this building. I scaled them down to size and it would be nice to have them in color but I have a black and white laser printer and that's what I use to print the photos out. And here you can see the pictures are tacked in place to the interior of the building. Chances are no one's going to notice those interior photos but I just like putting them in there. And I have the open sign in place and you can see how that looks. It looks pretty big. It's a little out of scale, but that'd be a real challenge if it was smaller to put it together and, and not break it as you're trying to build it. Here I have the five pieces for the front awning and I'm getting ready to put that together. I have the awning in place. And I also have the roofing material in place. And the roofing material is just some paper, adhesive back paper that's stuck down onto the wood. I 
A soldered extension leads to the LED wires. And then I heat shrinked all the solder joints. The roofing material is also adhesive back paper and I peeled the backing off the paper and stuck the pieces in place. I added tar seams to the roofing material and then I painted the roof black. I drilled a small hole in the roof and ran the wires for the LED down through the roof and then I secured the roof sign in place with uh, white glue And the LED wires for the roof sign are they're pretty inconspicuous. They're not, not real visible. I added the Fred and Red's burger signs to the sides of the building. After cutting the signs away from the sheet, I peeled off the adhesive backing and put the signs in place on the side of the building. And then I used the back side of a micro brush and burnish the sign onto the building so the surface of the sign conforms to the shape of the side of the building. I have all the LED wires routed through the bottom of the building and I put small tags on the wires for the roof sign and the open sign because those those signs, those LEDs are going to need some different resistor values than the interior LEDs. So I wanted to identify those to make it easier on me in the future. This sheet is the trim for the roof. And I got that all painted up and ready to install. I have the roof trim glued in place. And you can see that once you cut these pieces free from the sheet, you have to come back and touch up the sides. I have my roof tar done and I also have the exhaust stack for the grill in place. The window shades are just computer paper that I sponge painted with green paint. I thought that might give it some sort of artistic pattern. Well, I think that's it. I think it's all built. It went together real quickly. I, I spent maybe four evenings on it. And I don't know, I probably have 15 hours in it, I suppose. It went together easily. I think this would be a great first kit if somebody wants to try, you know, craftsman kits. I think my finishing skills for these craftsman kits needs to come up a little bit. I think I could do a better job finishing the model and making it look a little more polished. So that's something, something I'll do in the future. I'm going to mount the Fred and Red's burger joint right next to the Texaco. And my thought here is it's one of those eat and get gas things where the restaurant and the gas station are probably owned by the same people. They're painted very similar. The structures are going to mount on this 8th inch piece of styrene. And I built the temporary foam bottom to keep the wires from pinching. Finishing the scenery on this base will probably be my next project. I bought a couple HO scale vehicles, a couple 1950s cars, a couple 1970s cars. And I set it in place to make sure I had the spacing right. Well, that's it. The Blair Line Fred and Red's Cafe is a good kit. Went together really well. The instructions are good. I think it'd be a great entry kit if somebody wants to try Craftsman Structures. I think this would be a good one to, to start with. Uh, my finishing skills need to improve and that's something I'll work on in the future.